one of the pieces that I'm talking about I saw before my last appearance here when you were away it's the Rocky Horror Show and because it was running a bit longer and it was I had a few things to talk about I thought I'd postpone it to this week it runs until 30th of June have you seen it Philippa no I haven't I saw it oh I've seen it live maybe I don't think I've seen it live no it is different the the, um, live show is different but um it's for those who don't know well it did I think it's first outing here in Melbourne was 1974 and I'll just say, I must have been in kindergarten. I saw it. <laughs> um, it was extraordinary with Max Phipps's Frank and Furter. So it's some um, book, music and lyrics by one person, Richard O'Brien, who just, I mean, I don't think he stumbled upon a great success. He was obviously skillful, but it has been a phenomenon for so many decades. So this is its 50th anniversary since its first explosive fringe production in London. Wow. That was in 73, later the Melbourne one, which was in the derelict and dilapidated Fitzroy Tele Theatre, which was the old Channel 9 studio. So it was all ruined inside. And so it was similar in London. They did it in a sort of ruined old room above a theatre, I think it was. Um, it's an exhilarating and mischievous and salacious and occasionally it's been controversial show. Yeah. Um, it is, it's wild, it's fun. And it's like he tossed a trashy drag show into a particle collider with a classic 1950s B-grade sci-fi or horror movie to produce this. It's idiosyncratic and I suppose in some ways transgressive still um, rock musical. And this production is the 50th anniversary, as I said, but directed by Christopher Luscombe, who's also directed all the English versions of this recently, stars Jason Donovan. Remember Jason Donovan? And he's Frankenfurter. He also did that in London uh, 25 years ago or so, and he's okay. come back and done it in London again just before and after the lockdown, I think. And he's um, the... The sexy alien transvestite from the planet Transylvania who lives in a gothic mansion with his weirdo alien minions. Um, and he epitomises all that's sexually transgressive in this this particular musical's world of squeaky clean America of the 1950s, as we saw, see in double the old double features. So Donovan's an interesting and quite different uh, Frankenfurter in his course at Fishnets and Stilettos. That's the same. Uh, he's played it for many years, but he's, he sort of switches between audacious, sexy, manipulative and sort of sultry seducer uh, and a sort of crouching, prowling, cackling, mad scientist, which I've never seen before in this role. Uh, first entrance when he looks like a vampire in his cloak is a big hit. That's the um, Sweet Transvestite song. Um, it, I think what's what's interesting is to compare it, which I can't help but do, with f- previous versions of it. I saw Iota play, who's a, um, a singer, play it in a rather sort of, you know, refined, sexy sort of way. Uh, Craig McLaughlin, yes, controversial, but that show was fantastic. It was really vivacious and raunchy and more exuberant, I think. And I think the cast does make a big difference to it. Uh, I I have to say that I think the narrator has changed now. It's still on till the thirtieth, and I think the narrator who was Miff, Miff Warhurst yeah. when I saw it has changed. And it's there are a couple of different men doing it. One here and one in Adelaide. I think I can't remember who it is, um, but I think uh, I just expected a bit more gravitas and grandeur and um, to to vocal power to grab the audience. I don't think she was the right casting for it. But look, it's fun. There are lots of other sort of fun moments in it and wacky characters so until June 30th you've got that going and um, if you've never seen it get a look at it if yeah. you like a bit of a rock musical because it's it has got echoes of what you saw in the film too. yeah you know, obviously you see more detail and it moves around locations but this is you know theatrical and focuses on the music and yeah. characters um, so my next one that I saw in this last fortnight is Jackie have you heard about Jackie at the MTC no, uh, it's. I uh, should. Have, I should have though. You may have. There's been ads yeah. on the, you know, telly and the SBS on demand and all right. sorts of places. So it's a Melbourne Theatre Company play, uh, by. It's a new play written by Declan Ferber Gillick, uh, who is, I believe, from Alice Springs area. Oh, okay. uh, although he studied writing, he's an Indigenous um, writer. Uh, directed by Mark Wilson. They've been working on it in the MTC New Works program for several years, I think five years. Uh, but he studied, did the pro- postgraduate course in playwriting at the uh, Victorian College of the Arts. So Jackie 
played by Guy Simon, who is a terrific actor. I haven't seen him before. He straddles the two worlds of his own Indigenous culture and his adopted home in the city. Um, he's moved into a sort of white fella culture, I suppose. Now, what I heard um, Declan Ferber Gillick say on uh, the stage show on ABC was that Jackie had grown up with his white, the white side of his family in Sydney, but I didn't pick that up. I must have missed something in that, but that's his, his view of it. But he's moved south is the way it's been described. The rest of the family lives up on the mission, the Mish, as it's known, um, up north. Don't know where, whether it's Alice Springs or other, but he's now in the city. He's dexterously negotiating the complexities of urban life, don't we all? He's working as a sex worker, but he's also worked in a pub in an, in an office. He's um, does cultural performances about his own mobs dances. He's hoping to purchase an apartment if he can get full time contract work. So enter Jackie's kid brother Keith, who's played by Ngali Shaw. I'm sorry, I hope I've pr- pronounced that correctly. He's straight from the Mish. He's a rowdy, irresponsible kid who drinks a bit, jokes a lot, and has or is that had a baker's apprenticeship at um, up north. And Jackie believes Keith will transfer to a city apprenticeship if Keith ever leaves the couch, mm. um, which is where he's sitting with his Uber Eats and Xbox. So it's a sort of cultural clash within the family even because Keith represents all that sort of ebullient, excitable, you know, kid stuff and he's come to the city and he really doesn't want to fit in. But what um, Ferber Gillick does is raises, well, it's really a, like a Marxist view of capitalism in relation to the Indigenous culture, I suppose, and that seems to be his intention. The owners of the means of production, who owns the bakery that he works at? Why does he get paid such rubbish rubbish money? Why do they make all the dosh? It's really interesting. Um there's also other issues about who he works with and the older man who's got a bit of a penchant for, for black men. Uh, Glenn, played by Greg Stone, a really interesting character. And another woman, um, Linda, who's played by Alison White, who I love in everything. Yeah. She, um, he's She's running an employment sort of program and Jackie's supposed to be getting an internship and the funding goes west. So essentially it's – an eye opener in many ways with I for me, but I can't without spoiling it, can't tell you what happens and all the connections. Suffice to say, Jackie's choices at the end of the play are a result of this complex web of circumstances, his wrong turns and drastic missteps culturally and socially and I I have to say I understand a lot more about that culture, um, the indigenous culture and the movement to the city and Just by chance, two days later, I was working with an Indigenous man who I spoke to about his world, and he mentioned the Mish, a term I'd never heard before. Uh, He came from uh, a Mish, grew up in a mission. Fascinating, uh, really worth seeing, and that runs, for those who'd like to see it, till the 24th of June, so you've got time. Plenty of time. Yeah, 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 absolutely, and look, I really would recommend it. It's likely that it will be one of the shows, if you miss it live, that will end up on the um, Melbourne Theatre Company digital as well. I think it'll be popular uh, enough for them to do that. And we've got a little bit of time. To, I'll just mention Climbers. I didn't see the entire show, so I can't give a review, just more of a comment about what I saw. It was way longer than I expected and I had to leave. Um, it's Climbers by Ellie Darcy and a small a new company or a young company called Fever 103 Theatre. It's at 45 downstairs. It finishes tomorrow. But it's a, a majority is a very young cast and a lot of them are recent graduates from VCA. So very talented performers. It's ambitious. Uh, it's Meg Taranto, who is the lead. Rosalind is audacious and fun and really she's a talent to look out for, VCA grad. Uh, it takes place in 1939. Rosalind's an A-grade student at Cambridge and she's a bit naughty, a bit modern and she wants to join the boys who climb over the buildings climb over the rooftops and uh, she does that and it's and it's exciting and fun and frivolous and she has a little romance by the interval and it starts to turn or it does turn very dark in the second half. Uh, I think it draws on modern concepts of, of um, gender as well but I would suggest it's worth a look at if you've got a bit of time uh, tomorrow. And there's you know, a bunch of festivals, Puppetry Festival at La Mama coming up. There's a few La Mama on screens and the Rising Festival is on at the moment. I'll just point to the Robin Archer show, which is uh, 
concert hall, I believe. I think it's Monday and Tuesday. I can't see it because I'm running away to the coast. Oh, nice. <laughs> Somewhere warm. And what's coming up for school holidays? Is anything there in is, particular? Uh, I, I've got um, – there's a school show in Rising called um, Hide the Dog, but that's not a holiday festival show. Uh, I don't have any of those. I'll maybe come up with a list of those for next time because yeah. there's things – there's a puppetry festival at La Mama which will be part of that um, or will um, cross over some of that because that's the end of June. It's the beginning of July. So that's worth doing. Some of those are adult shows. Uh, but there will be events at the Melbourne th- at the Art Centre and other local festival places. I'll have a look. Yeah, that'd be great to have a list so our listeners can take sure. the kids and grandkids out. Thank you, Kate Herbert. Thank you also to our um, contributors today. Uh, that was Nick, our fabulous producer. Um, and we had uh, Kira Stevens and Mel Chambers. Um, thank you for listening today, dear listener. Get out and about.